inspiration uh, behind <laughs> architect and inspiration. He designed this lovely building that we're in, and he's going to talk you through some of the exciting challenges he faced. Thank you. Uh, one of the great design things I put in is that 11.30 on the summer solstice, there'd be a beam of sunlight falling on me. <laughs> I mean, how good is that? Right, um, yeah, I'm an architect. I've been involved in CAT since 1976 and done quite a lot of the buildings, I would say the better ones around the site. Um, in 2000, uh, I was given a brief to design a uh, university building for CAT. Um, and being us, uh, the design was to be a modern building using the sort of ideas of the modern movement, that is daylight, sunlight, space, <laughs> connections to the outside. And in our case, using as much as possible, probably 90%, uh, benign or low impact materials. So that's what we tried to do. And then it was open ten, a mere 10 years later. I didn't, you notice I didn't say finished, because buildings are never finished, and particularly this one. So. What we did was continue this palette of materials that we've been using at least 10, 20 years before. Uh, lots and lots of different constructions, which I won't go into all of them apart from the Ram Dorth Lecture Theatre, which we're in, which is handy. Um, and we'd already done Ram Dorth. We did uh, walls, columns and blocks in what is called attic, which is autonomous environmental information centre of the shop in 1999, these discrete panels which work really well. So Kat asked us to do a rammed earth lecture theatre and they wanted it circular with a view. So we got that. It is circular. Crazy shape for a lecture theatre because of the reverberation and echoes. There you go. Um, so that's what we did. So it's 200 seater place. So there's maybe that many here. Uh, which meant it had to be this big, so it's 14 and a half metres across. And to give a, a sort of rule of thumb in architecture is to make a, a special place, as this is, half the height of the width. The height should be half the width, which is what it is. So that meant walls twice the height of these ones, 7.2 metres tall. So this is the story of how we did it. There's also thousands of earth blocks which um, we bought from Ibstock because they realised that stupid green people are paying more for unfired blocks than they will for fired blocks. So that's what we did. So all the partitions down here in unfired clay. Um, the why is not about why did we do it this shape, it's about why did we do it in rammed earth. Um, and as you know, as we've been shown, there's a huge worldwide earth tradition. So those were to us the four important things, that it was local, very low embodied energy, very strong, or strong enough anyway, dense and conductive, so very good for thermal mass, keeping the place cool, uh, mostly. And it can be beautiful, as you see. Um, so it's strong in that it's holding up this massive roof, so it's the structure of this building. But you'll notice that its dense conductive materials are not insulating. So as with attic, we put it inside the insulated envelope. So there's a, a walkway around the outside of this, and then the hemcrete insulated walls are external. Because it's quite expensive, so you may as well see both sides of it, rather than it being an external wall that's insulated. And you get the most surface area for the thermal mass point of view. So that's why, and there's a few precedents. I only discovered this uh, last spring at the Alhambra. Had I known it had already been done, I wouldn't have done it. But there you go. Um, so then we went through a process. This was 2004. How are we going to build it? There's lots of ways of building in rammed earth, and this is the sort of sheet that the Bureau Hapold structure engineers provided for us. And Roland was part of that decision making process. So we could do completely monolithic, like the Chapel of Reconciliation, 
um, with shattering, completely shattering the whole thing up. Or we could do ro the traditional rolling form work like you find in all over the world, Nepal and so on. Uh, we'd already done repetitive discrete panels on attic, so we wouldn't, well, it was a consideration, but we didn't, we knew that worked extremely well. Let's try something different, because we'd made columns and panels load-bearing. Or you could interlock those, or this one, which is incredible, that is Martin Rauch's building, prefabricating elements, as you can see here, and lifting them into buildings. So we played with that for a bit, well, my computer played for it, and then the contractors actually built a block and see if we could build in this, but it looked too difficult to do, really. Um, but the advantage, of course, is that you can do it all in a workshop and it dries and then you can put them in like enormous ashlar stone. So we decided to do it in four segments, as you can see around here, um, and it needed curved shattering. Uh, we were quite keen that Contractor made the shuttering as we did on Attic, but they wanted to use this concrete formwork, which is uh, designed, uh, it has a plywood sheet that's bent with various screws to the right shape, and then you have to make up the difference between the inside and outside diameter. Um, so they did various test walls and so on. This is the material, because you may have noticed there isn't any subsoil here. We're on a slate tip 30 meters deep. So although there is, we do have a field which has got some earth you can build in. Um, they didn't really want to dig the field up. So we bought in earth. Well, it was more or less free. Uh, they're very, very good. The quarry at Thunkis, owned by Lafarge. And, they, and we went around, here we are, serious people kicking piles of earth, uh, looked at various materials they had. This is the strata, and the limestone is what they quarry, and this is stuff that they have which has got a little bit of clay in it. And we did tests at the University of Bath, Pete Walker's organisation, and various trials of different ones, um, and tests. Here's the ideal graph for rammed earth construction. It's particle size from clay to gravel. And this is the one we chose in the end, number six. Uh, very little clay in it, just enough. And the shrinkage was tiny, which was really good. Because on attic, the walls shrunk 25 mil, so we had to adjust the roof as it shrunk. But this was very small, 15 mil in this height, which is nothing really. Uh, so they're not ideal, but pretty good. And we very much like this stuff uh, because it's this very fine aggregate. And we wanted to show off the fact that you can do a beautiful modern building. So making it as kind of fine and crisp as possible, which may go against some of your feelings, but we thought that was an important thing. So it's six mil down. So they did some test walls. Just note before we move on, the depth of these layers. You see it looks quite different from these layers. That will come up later. Um, they uh, sourced a good rammer, which they could run for all day without white finger and so on. Um, and as it was going on, the moisture content was very carefully controlled. They would take some, put it in an oven microwave test its moisture content because we were told we should keep it somewhere in here, 6%. Uh, and that's pretty well what it is. Here's some of the results. There's the band. So most of it, with the odd outlier, but mostly after testing, that's what it was. So that was pretty good. Um, we built it on a, a plinth wall of um, sand lime bricks, which are very low energy brick and limecrete fill with uh, cork insulation to stop the heat loss from the uh, thermal bridge at the bottom. And here's the curved shuttering with the Dewey Dag bars, so you now know what those holes are. Yeah, five minutes. Well, that's not going to happen. Um, <laughs> um, so here we are ramming 
preparing it, ramming 100 mil, as Bess said, 100 mil thick. It was built without a roof, which I think was a bit of a silliness in uh, Machantles, because it rains a lot. It had to be propped, because it's not very strong until you got the roof up. Um, and here it is finished with a plate with bars, uh, rods to take the um, wall plate. But it collapsed when they took the shuttering off. Uh, so here it is dropping down seven metres ground. Nobody's hurt, but there's a lot of worried people. And what it turned out was that, yes, the layers ended up as 100 mil thick instead of 50 mil, which you can see here. So obviously they tried to cut corners when nobody's looking and uh, it didn't work quite an important lesson because they then had to knock the whole thing down it was proven without doubt it was their fault um, Roland wasn't involved at this stage just to lift his uh, um, and do it again so exactly the same slide but done properly and uh, gave the right thing some lessons from it it was quite expensive it took seven and a half months to do this uh, this is the attic one, equivalent, uh, about about half, no, 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 not quite half, three quarters of the time per cubic metre. And the cost, because the scaffolding was hugely expensive, uh, not scaffolding, the shuttering, the formwork, uh, £150,000. And of course, they had it all the time, they had to take it down and put it back up again, which added another six months or something. So that was the main difference, really. Then there's a wall plate bolted down to those things. Uh, in case it shrunk, there's some wedges. And then we built the roof on top of that. And I've nearly finished. Can you believe that? Um, so here we are with, we had to do, with, the shat, with the, all the scaffolding down, ready to finish it off. We rather liked it as it was with just the walls but Cat wanted doors on it to stop sound, and there's a big, so he designed a huge sliding wooden door there. But we were quite pleased. And it got a few awards. This terra incognita, which is very nice, so you imagine that's something to do with Earth. On the same list is the Alhambra, so that I think puts us in quite good company. These are the lessons that we learnt, really. I think make your own shuttering it's far cheaper uh repetitive uh, you know the way we did it on attic was i think very sensible um using the same shuttering over and over again and just moving around um so ramming in discrete segments would have reduced the cost hugely if we'd have done that the thickness would have increased to 600 mil it's 500 at the moment Attic is, own, is half the height, uh, but that's 450 because they're straight walls. So the curve gives you that strength. If we'd have done this in straight walls, not connected really, then it'd have to be 600 thick. That's just a structural thing to do with slenderness ratio. And then build a roof first, as we did in Attic, so you could build indoors in Wales, because that's what you do. That's why we love timber buildings. We put the roof up first, You've got a nice workshop then. Um, and have somebody keeping an eye on it if it's a contract because people will try and cut corners and it'll fall down. That's the end. Thank you.